सो गाइज दिस इज दार्ट टू ऑफ द वीडियो एंड इफ यू हैवेंट वॉच्ड यू शुड डेफिनेटली गो एंड सी पार्ट वन द लिंक इज इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन फॉर पार्ट वन ऑफ दिस वीडियो एंड दिस पार्ट टू इज एक्चुअली वेरी इंसाइटफुल इफ यू आर कंटिन्यूइंग फ्रॉम पार्ट वन यू विल गेट हैंग ऑफ दिस एंटायर वीडियो सो आई डू रिकमेंड गो एंड वॉच पार्ट वन फर्स्ट एंड विदाउट एनी डिलेस लेट गेट स्टार्ट विद द वीडियो so so i almost have covered everything uh just last few questions my next question would be so a lot of international students and a uh, lot of in- architects and uh, engineers they always worry about like you know what uh, how much they will be uh, getting paid like whenever they will be joining this field and uh, how is the workload and uh, is it like lifestyle wise is is it a good field to go for so can you give us brief idea about how much the salary would be for a fresher like who has just one or two years of experience in construction project management or into architecture so it's it's a very difficult question to answer in the sense of because every company is different and every company has a structure and you can go online and have a look to get a ballpark in that in the you know in in the industry that you want to that you want to go into um and again it all depends like work life balance i tell you for the first 15 years of my life it was crap it was like i was working all the time and that's how he, you know and it's it's one of those things it's it's very you know you, you're always pushing to try and get higher and higher and higher and that's why i went off on my own i mean i work just as many hours as i did in industry but i'm my own boss i can do you know i i set my time so i you know i can easily put in a 10 hour day no problem Wow. um but the thing is everything i'm building is for myself you know for my company whereas when i was working in in industry it's like all right you're building you know you're hopefully building it for yourself but it's like you know you 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 are just a number within a company and i think you know it, it's it's like a double edged sword it's always the same there's a lot of there's positives and there's negatives which is why you read now a lot of people you know the people move around they jump around a lot um from company to company you know is it a good thing is it not a good thing is a loyal to companies i don't know so when you look so the thing is really to gauge you know how much you're going to you know i as i said before what you need to do is it's not just a matter of looking at how much you're going to make the first time because the, you're going to you 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 need to decide yourself how much you're willing to get paid for the effort that you're going to do and then you look at opportunities to build you know build yourself up within a company or move somewhere else or do something so really and the when i was saying before like about a project charter you should have a personal charter what you need to do is you need to have a road map so what you should do is you should say right i'm becoming you know i'm i want to become an architect i want to become a civil engineer mechanical engineer project manager right i'm going to do this for one year i'm going to do this for two years and you should set it out with your managers you should sit down and normally they have every year they have a review you know you have an annual review to see whether you're going to you know how you're doing within the company and everything so you should really set it out to say look this is where this is where i'm aiming this is where i'm you know this is where i want to go to um the reasons why some of the times i moved companies was because the next stage in my mind wasn't in the company and i tried to get to that level so i just moved somewhere else because there wasn't the growth otherwise i probably would have stayed with some of the companies it just you know there was there was you know there were times when there was a lot of project engineers and to become a project manager there was you know you have like 15 project engineers and there's only going to be like three or four managers so the likelihood is small then somebody comes along and you find another job and you go project manager fine I'll be a project manager so so really you know going back to that is you have to you know that it swings you know between companies and you know your work life balance you have to understand bigger companies i mean it, again the, the one of the things I, i you know was told that you don't leave a company you leave a manager in the sense of like you know a lot of the companies have the right policies they have the right procedures a lot of the times the managers are not managing the people and i i remember i remember one of my old managers i moved departments and the old manager came to my new manager and said why how come you snatched him off me and his response was if you were managing properly he wouldn't have left you so mm-hmm. so you know you have to understand that it's not just that you know the money is a massive factor in in everything but you have to find the right the right industry the right position that's going to you know going to going to suit you because it's tough you know you you're talking about project management you could be working 
you know, there's times when I was out on the road, you know, 15 hours a day, you know, when a project, you know, when you get to that end of a project and you need to finish a project, you know, I was traveling from, from Toronto to San Francisco for a year every week, going wow. back and forward. So it all depends on your tolerance. Is that something that you, you want to do? Is that something you don't want to do? So, and then, then you have to decide on the pay, you know, you have to, and those are the kind of things of like, you know, you have to decide, you know, if you're going to sit on an office desk and you're just going to push paper, there's a, there's, there's a fee for that. If you're going to go out and you're going to put yourself out and deal with more stuff, there's another fee for that. But really, you know, you have to decide on with yourself how much, you know, how much you're worth, how, you know, and how you're going to move through those ranks. You know, some people they'll, they'll take a, you know, there's a lot of people that will offer services a lot, a lot less to be able to get into a company, to be able to build and 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 slowly build up their portfolio and build up their experience and build up the wages as well. Okay. So it's all about like, you know, how you build up yourself, you know, experience wise and uh, exposure wise. Uh, yeah. And uh, from the sense of what I'm getting from you, it's like for the initial few years, probably, a person who is into construction project management or project management will have to work really hard. Probably there won't be a very good work-life balance. Uh, is that true? Like, am I getting it right, sir? Yeah. So through, I, I feel like it depends. Yeah, construction is one of those things where it's always, you know, you're always on the go. There's always something. But if that's something that you enjoy, you have to set your own boundaries. And that's why I'm saying it's important to find the right company because the way I see projects generally, what happens is, is there's a quiet period. Then yeah. it starts to ramp up, starts to get busy, 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 busy. And then you're going crazy. And then as the project closes, it kind of goes quiet again. So you have to understand once you understand that life cycle and you understand that it's coming and you can make the most of those opportunities, that's when you, so you have to work yourself into those kind of things. So I know in construction, majority of places, they close down between, you know, Christmas and New Year. And most people, they're just, that's it because that's the biggest break. Certain certain things in, in construction, when I worked in the power industry, when I worked on the rail, that was the busiest time because everybody's trying to, you know, nobody's traveling much, everybody's doing the most amount of work. So again, it just, you know, religion also pays something. I don't celebrate Christmas or New Year really. So I was happy to work, it doesn't matter. My holidays are different times of the year, so it's fine, you know, I'm happy to work. So you just, you know, you, so yes, construction is very, very very busy i think a lot of jobs now are you know very very busy there's a lot going on you have to and that's you know you have to set your own boundaries you have to set right this is what i'm you know and this is why it's so clear when you go in it's so important that you set clear objectives and clear roles when you go into a company to say this is what i want to do you know this is where i want to be these are the hours that i want to do and you know flexible working is now becoming a bigger thing it's not always possible but most people understand it more than they did originally you know i've had managers that are like you have to be at your desk at nine to four, you know, like night, you know, it doesn't always work that way. What yeah. happens then when you're out on site until 10 o'clock at night, you still want me to be in nine to four. So you have to set your, you know, you have to really set yourself, you know, your limits, work out what you want to do, how you want to progress, you know, and what, and what, you know, like, you, where is your pain point? You know, where is it going to become, you know, too much, you yeah. know, and, and again, you know, you have to, you know, and you have to be cognizant, you have to be aware that these things are happening and adjust, you know, you, you start off, it's the same with projects. You start off with a project, you think everything's going to be amazing. Yeah. Things happen along the way. You have to adjust. It's sailing. You know, the wind changes direction. You say it, you change your sail, you know, and, that, and it's nothing wrong to change. Just, yeah. you have to understand, you have to set your goals yeah. and then also going back to monitor against those. So even though you set it, don't just set it and then say, right, 12 months, I'll come back to it. No, say every quarter, right? This is what I want to do. This is how I want to do. This is how I want to progress. Wow. Actually, sir, this is kind of, kind of very insightful for me also. Uh, so this is something like, you know, even I kind of find myself uh, pushed into a lot of times this scenario, like where I'm like thinking like, I can do so much, I can do so much more and there's that. But uh, I'm stuck in like, you know, certain areas where I can't, perform at my best or like what I know I can't do that but uh, this is all part of process I think and um, as you said like you know I think so the main motive behind this entire like you know answer was like you have to be kind of passionate for what you do and uh, if you are passionate enough like I'm talking for the audience I think so uh, if you are passionate enough I think so you will get through with it like you know you will keep going through with the 
hards and softs of this industry i think oh definitely and uh, you know you got you know, it's it, you have to you have to want to do it it's one you know and i think anything you're going to you're going to you're going to progress and just going back to something that you were saying that took me years to understand is that sometimes some opportunities are not productive to your progression and i always remember there was a manager and he oh, and he turned down certain projects and i was like what do you mean you're turning down projects why are you turning down projects because he realized that some projects are just going to drag the soul out of him yeah and he was very selective and you don't always get the opportunity and i was not strong enough at times to do that because i thought it was for the good of the company for the good of this i'm going to keep on moving forward and do it and and you know i got experience with it but there's a lot of scars that come with that as well so you have to understand sometimes that you know you want to do everything but some things are detrimental to your progression and you have to be able to understand those and sometimes you can say you know what i'm it's like a, you know it's like a lot companies do a loss leader in the sense of what they'll do is they'll sell a product and they'll lose money because they're hoping that more business is going to come out of that so you can do that as a personal progression you can say right i'm going to do this project it's not going to do me any favors but i'm i'm going to get more out of this um in the long run so you have to be identified that. But there's some that are like, it's a lost leader and you're not going to make any money. And it's not just not going to make any money. It's going to ruin your reputation. It's going to drag you down. And that's when you're really going to think, right, you know what? It's not worth doing it. And and even though at the time, you know, this time I was talking, I was talking to, to my colleague here. Um, and, um, you know, sometimes, you know, I lose a project and you think, oh my, you know, lose a project. It's a year's worth of work. My projects are like a year's worth of work. You know, you, you work so hard to, to try and get the project. You lose it and you think, you know, like all this time and effort and, you know, it's not just time and effort. It's like you get really involved, you know, as a project manager, you get really involved, you know, the design intimately, you know, it's it's you're creating something. And only, the, you know, a few months down the line, you realize I lost the project because something bigger was coming. And that's why. And if I would have had this project, the next project, I wouldn't have been able to deliver. So you have to always be positive in that sense. You know, so the thing is, yeah, you just have to be careful how you choose projects yeah. and how you navigate through through uh through through you know through any kind of career path yes i i totally agree that uh, so my last question would be this is again from the perspective of international students and all the professionals that are willing to come to canada it's uh, about the construction project management opportunity here in canada what are your perspective like is canada a good place to practice cpm yeah, I think, you know, I've always, from my, when I set out originally doing you know, my career, I always stayed in utilities. I was like, I'm utilities. Utilities never go down. No matter how many virtual worlds there are, you still need houses, you still need power, you still need gas, you need water. So I've always been very a big advocate of, you know, stay in the utilities industry because, you know, there's always going to be jobs there. There's always, it's a very unique industry. I moved out of the utilities a little bit um, just because of the journey that I'm on and, you know, the projects. What I found is, you know, when I went off on my own, I was like, oh, I can go and manage these big projects like I did originally. But it wasn't because, you know, I'm a small company. They're dealing with very, very large, you know, large, larger projects that I'm not big enough to deal with. Hopefully one day my company will, you know, will, will be big enough to be able to take those on again and I can do those. So um, but Canada's, a, Canada's a great place in the sense of, you know, and it's growing. There's a lot of immigration happening here. So the more immigration, the more houses, the more infrastructure, everything's growing. Um, so yeah, as a, as a construction project manager, there are plenty of opportunities in construction. Um, you know, construction industry is huge, even though, you know, everyone's talking about recession coming and there's a bit, you know, so it scales back a little bit, but there's still a lot of opportunity. Canada is a young country. Um, there's a lot going on here. There's a lot of opportunity, you know, the, the Toronto is growing, you know, they want to bring in, what is it half a million immigrants every year so there's houses needed there's infrastructure needed there's there's projects that are going on so yeah there's definitely a, you know in construct i've always you know i'm passionate about construction i always feel that there's always you know a, a, a lot going on in construction you have to set yourself up to succeed you know like it's the same you know moving in countries is not easy and a lot of people think oh i was i come from the uk i come to canada it's easy i have the same problem that everyone else has i come here with zero credit i come here with zero anything and you have to build yourself up it's you know you have to really be wanting to and i always remember i, I went to see an immigration lawyer years ago um just about we we're, were looking to work in the us so we're looking about how to deal with the us and that's another thing canada's also got the us market so a lot of companies they're also working in the us 
So not just that you're in Canada, you also can be working across the border in the US. And he said that, you know, the immigrants, they've got such a drive to work because where they've come from, you 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 outmark a lot of the, the 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 people that are here. You know, the harder you've been, you know, the harder the journey is, the more of a drive that you have. And that's, you know, again, it comes to a personal preference and how hard you want to work. It's like anything, you know, I've learned over the years, you know, you you are the one that can set your destiny. You know, you set the right things up, you are in the in control. You know, you can go anywhere in the world and make it work if you've got a hard enough drive. And you see that. You see, you know, people that make that successful that come from nothing. And it's more and more visible now, especially with internet and with people, you know, out there putting themselves out there. You know, it's a great place to come to and you can make it, you know, within construction. There's so much that the, there's such a shortage of people in construction and it's only getting worse that if that's really your passion, definitely. Wow. Actually, sir, this was actually this was very motivating i got motivated because of this actually <laughs> um well uh to all the people who are watching this uh so it's a green light from a professional that you can come here and there will be a lot of opportunity waiting for you but uh, you have to focus on certain things that he has mentioned that it is not easy you have to be very passionate and very hard working for at least for the initial part of uh, your journey because you will be learning you will be learning a lot of uh, on site rules regulations and like you know how things goes on site so you have to be patient you have to be passionate and uh, i think so this journey would be a good one for you yeah it's definitely very rewarding i i've been i've been in canada 9 years and it's only in the past year that i've felt you know what, this is, you know, like it's, and it takes time. That's the thing. You have to be patient. You have to know that it will come. You just have to take time. You have to go. It's like anything. You want to become a good project manager. It's going to take time. You want to move countries. It's going to take time. So you just have to understand it's a long, it's a long journey, but a rewarding journey. So you just have to be patient and let life take its toll, you know, take its, take, take you on that journey. Yeah. Actually, sir, like uh, I feel myself like sometimes I become very impatient and I think so this problem is uh, coming up with entire generation like my generation and like upcoming generations like we want things to be quick. We want our life to be fast paced, achieve success quickly as possible. But uh, right now, like at this stage of my life, I am trying to like, you know, digest the fact that things will take time. I can't uh, rush through it. I will probably do the worst uh, because of this rushing through something like I have to go through the process. And like, you know, that's how we progress and grow probably. So, the, so the best I mean, you look at think about this, right? How long does it take to build? Right. So you're building, you know, I'm, I'm working now on a, on a residential, right? A residential project, right? So residential projects, it's 100 units, 97 units, nine floors. So think about it. How long is it going to take to design and build a project? It's like two, two and a half years. Yeah. And that's one project. So think about it. You, you know, in two and a half years, you're going to get experience on one project delivering, you know, like one project from design to the end. And that's just one project. So think about it, right? You've got 10 years. Let's see on 10 years, you can maybe do, you know, five, six projects. Then you can start. And I think they say, is it 20,000? I can't remember how many hours it is. You become an expert. I think it's it's like 10 years of experience. Robert. They say it's about 10 years of experience that you become an expert. So think about it. In 10 years, you've only delivered five projects. It takes time. It takes, there's no way, you know, there's no way of rushing. Even, even to build a one house, you want to do a custom home, it's going to take you a year, a year and a half. Mm -hmm. And you can't rush it. There's no way that you can rush these things. So the thing is, is that, yes, you could manage four or five projects at the same time. So you're getting more experience, but you still have to do those baby steps. You still have to go through. It's like you can't, a baby doesn't just get up and walk. They, they have to go through a, a process and it's the same thing with anything you just have to go through that process yes we want to try and rush it on but the thing is i always say there's you know and no matter how many books i've read from all these influencers and they tell you do this do that the other they're giving you a guide they're showing you how you can do it but until you go out there and i call it get your fingers burnt until you go out and experience it yourself you you're not learning so you have to be able to take those risks 
And yes, some people can speed things up. There are some people that can make things happen a bit faster. But most people, it's like it's like good wine. Good wine takes time. Yeah. <laughs> well said, sir. <laughs> actually, that's a good uh, good reference that you have given. Actually, anything anything that uh, that is like you know long lasting, that is like permanent, more solid. I think so. It takes its own time, and uh, we all have to agree to that that you know we have to take one step at a time we can't jump a lot bunch of step and then you know land up some big big at a big place and probably we will let them let them down and let ourselves down if we skip all these steps so i i do agree with that and i think so a lot of people would learn a lot of things just by this one hour conversations that we have and uh, only thing i could say is like so thank you so much for enlightening us for showing us the uh, mirror or the view of what the industry is like what things that people would need for themselves to progress in this industry and how to progress in this industry so so thank you so much uh, i'm really grateful that you took this time out and like you know you guide us through this entire process uh, i would i would tag like to tag your linkedin profile uh in the video so that like you know people can uh like connect to you see that what you are doing see the company that you have formed and probably like you know i wish that you know someday someday probably i can work for your company or something <laughs> hopefully yeah hopefully sir <laughs> it's yeah no it's 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 you know you just as i said you know I, I i'm always you know i i went off on my own so i'm not just when i went off on my own to open my own company i did a lot of things on my own i was the only one in you know in, the fam in my family you know in my circle that became an engineer got a degree you know and i did it as a mature student then i went off to a different country and opened my own so i've, I've always you know i've always been like the person that's has you know been on my own so i know what it's like so when people come to me and ask me for advice I'm always trying to help because I know what it's like not to have a circle of people that can. And it's great that you're doing this. It's nice that we connected. And you know, we've, you know, in the past we've done networking events and I've told you, you know, we're going to do something like this. It's a great, you know, it's a great time to meet people. And, you know, there's, you know, it, the, the, it's all the big buzzword now is collaboration. And that's how you get things done. You collaborate. So definitely, you know, I'm, you know, it's been a pleasure to, you know, I also gain when I come on these things because you've got to also look at the perspective and it's always good. You know, you, you, it's not just always one side. So, you know, if I can, you know, as I said, if I can help people, definitely, you know, drop me a line if you want to connect with me from, from LinkedIn, definitely do. And I'll try and help. There's only so many hours in the day, but if I can help, there's people that call me. It's very interesting. There was somebody that called me. He wanted to go off on his own and start a thing. He, I was driving. He called me five minutes. He just wanted some advice. It's it's not that difficult. You know, it's like, wow. So very few people have the mindset that you have uh, that, you know, helping is always better. Like, and I I am grateful that you understand, like, you know, for the freshers and the people who are coming to a new country and going to step into a new industry, we don't have any point of reference. And I think so this interview uh, would give a big point of reference, like how things are on the ground, what things, uh, how their life would be like for next five to 10 years, probably people can figure it out from this particular interview. So that's really amazing. And I can't be thankful enough for you, sir. Like You're welcome. I and mean, yeah, if people have questions, drop, you know, there's always comments, people can make comments, you know, you can, you know, follow me on LinkedIn and definitely, uh, you know, we'll do a follow up. Yes. You can do a follow up with all the questions. Definitely. And I would I would actually love to meet you. Like one day we might have an interview in a proper studio and like, you know, Definitely. and and probably with far more questions for you, sir. That's fine. That's okay. <laughs> I'm good with questions. I'm a project manager. Everyone's asking me questions. Yeah, definitely. You are you are amazing with questions and your answers, sir. Like I really loved having this conversation. It was really, really amazing, sir. So You're welcome. Again, I would thank you and uh, I would end this podcast on this note. So uh, thank you so much. I'm going to stop the uh, recording right now. And uh, for the people, if you guys enjoyed this, if you guys, uh, guys love this uh, 
podcast go ahead hit a like and subscribe to my channel don't forget to check his linkedin out he has really amazing posts really insightful knowledge and you as you heard like you can even reach out but guys reach out with sensible and logical questions don't bother someone because he is a very busy person so keep that thing in mind be very sensible about someone's time and if you are messaging just don't bother so it's okay you can ask questions but like you know you have to understand person's time also so i think so that's all i have to say for today uh, see you soon take care of yourself so guys i hope you enjoyed the part 2 more such amazing contents are being made and are in process it takes me time because of my professional life but i will try my level best to keep giving you such amazing content and guys if you haven't liked and subscribed this video go ahead hit a like and subscribe the channel my channel needs your support to grow so take care of yourself and see you soon bye bye